Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'd like to welcome you to Bob Weber Auto Mart on Douglas Avenue here in Racine across from Douglas Park. We specialize in one-year-old, low mileage, almost new cars. And if you'd like to stop by and see them or see them on our website, BobWeberAutomart.com, we can save you between five dollars and $10,000 on your next almost new car purchase. Hi, welcome to Money Talks, the Journal Times online business show. I'm business reporter Michael Burke, and uh, today we're at Roberts Roost, 600 6th Street, with Paul Roberts and Karen Roberts, the owners. Um, I think it'll be a fun show. You guys have been around about 16 months so far and done right. really fantastically well, as I understand, in that time, right? Beyond expectations? More than we ever thought. Yeah. More than we ever thought. Yeah, that's great. Um, so how did how did each of you come to the food business? Did you come to the food business just through him, or did just you have prior? Him. Okay. No, just Th him. Then why don't you talk about your experience? Because I know you have a long, many years uh, I, of experience. I, I, I started at Obie's Restaurant, which was on Lathrop Avenue down... Uh, God, about that, like the 2,000 block or something 2, like that, block somewhere in there? And I started there, it was a, a friend of my dad's, and, you know, kind of got a job mm -hmm. and just wanted to... Right out of high know, school? Or what? Yeah. You know, uh -huh. And spent a few years there, and it was a buffet-style restaurant, uh -huh. but during the week they did uh, short-order cooking, mm -hmm. uh, all the breakfast, and, and which really intrigued me. Yeah. So... By the way, why don't you define that term, short order cooking? Short order cooking is quick, fast. Um, you can go from zero to six, as, as we put it back there. You know, one of my one of my favorite terms that I say back in the kitchen is, "and we're off," <laughs> which means, you know, you've got a you know a couple tickets up, and all of a sudden there's ten tickets up. Uh huh. And now you've got to be able to be able to decipher what's going on you uh -huh. got to get the food out right away uh -huh. but you also have to look ahead and uh -huh. it's just like real quick it takes 20 30 seconds to cook an egg you know but it takes mm -hmm. longer to cook hash browns it right. takes longer to cook pancakes it did, uh -huh. you know and so it's just like bang 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 and you like that you said i it's the adrenaline when i i live on that adrenaline of when we got to get it done, let's get it done. Uh -huh. You know, I, and my son, who had helped us out here for a while, had said to me at one point in time, he goes, Dad, he goes, lines out the door, we got a ton of tickets, people are just standing around, and you're joking around, and you're having fun, and we're just getting everything done, and we're slow, and there's nobody here. He goes, you're not fun, <laughs> you know, you know, you know, because there should be something getting done. So uh -huh, uh -huh. that's that's kind of where. So you started right out of high school at Obie's. You learned short order cooking. Where'd you go from there in your food career? Well, what it, what I did at that point, that I actually was with the, the family business. Uh, I was a construction business, and it and it and it folded. So I had to go into to something else, and I went to Old Country Buffet, and I worked there for. 12, 13 years. The local one? Now, was that at yeah, Westgate I was the Square original, at the time? Yeah, I was actually the original hire at the, the Racine Old Country Buffet. Okay. Started as a cook. Uh-huh. And then through the years, I worked myself up to, you know, assistant manager, you know, supervisor, and then we ended up in Minnesota as my own store as a general manager. Mm -hmm. So I kind of, they call it the bootstrap. Uh-huh. You, know, you, you, you kind of know everything. So. so how many years were you in the food business before this? Oh, probably a good 13, 14 years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's a gap in there. What did you, Briefly, what did you do after that? And, and anything that applies to, and helped you in this job especially would be kind of interesting to hear about. Well, I, I came back and a good friend of mine had a, a security business and uh, card access, cameras, alarm systems. And we needed a job, and I just kind of started working with that. Mm -hmm. And I just went through that for about, God, I can't even remember how many years. Just a few years. But it was just something that, that I learned, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it was a business. And it helped feed the, you know, feed the family, yeah. and I had a job and did all that. 
And then after that, I went and to the uh, Boys and Girls Club CYC down in Kenosha, mm -hmm. which was a youth sports. And I ran the facilities and. Uh, so you're doing maintenance type stuff, huh? All the facilities, all the athletics. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that helps me so much with owning this business is if we need to fix something, I'm capable of doing it. I've learned it. Mm -hmm. And the other part is dealing with customers. You know, I dealt with youth sports parents. Uh -huh. And which is crazy. Uh -huh. You know, they're great people, uh -huh. but, you know, they, they, they intense? Learned, oh, very much so. Very much so. Uh -huh. Very much so. So, that's really helped. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So. Uh, so, you decided to open your own restaurant. You decided to take the plunge, and um, you decided to open a breakfast and lunch restaurant. And you could have done various kinds of things, but you decided on. Let's face it, this is just kind of, um, you know, sort of basic food. It's, it's go and get a, a, a breakfast or a lunch, chili or eggs or pancakes and things like that. Why did you decide on that model and a breakfast and lunch as opposed to, say, lunch and supper? Well, after I left Old Country Buffet, we had talked about that. And it was something I really wanted to do, but the kids were so small. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to put, you know, uh, you know, I'll say the question right now. You know, when I was at Old Country Buffet, I worked seven days a week, maybe six. And if I got that one day off, I did what? Slept all day. <laughs> Don't all day. do it. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, and I didn't want that. Uh -huh. You know, I wanted to be able to, to, to enjoy myself. I wanted to be able to say, Meg, let's go play golf. You know, uh -huh. hey, I'm done. It's, it's 2.30. Mm -hmm. And I understand it's going to take a little bit of time to be able to do that. Uh -huh. You know, and... Uh, I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Uh -huh. Now, Karen, I know you were the one responsible for the decor, even though, Paul, you, you would like to claim a little part of the credit because wait, wait, you actually put the... I decorated You put the, you put, you put the text place, in right? or something yeah. like that. <laughs> um, and so, since we can't see everything, but it, I, there are some things about this that are really kind of charming. You've got um, a lot of things to look at around the restaurant. Uh, every tablecloth is different. I, I think that's yep. uh, really interesting. Yeah. Every table has a big sheet of paper and, and a little bucket of crayons on it. Uh, is that to keep the kids busy? And the adults. And the adults? Um, and the adults, because <clears throat> we've had lots of artists come in. Um, and oh, yeah? We actually, the girls and I will, if we see something really beautiful, you know, or even cute, we'll cut it uh -huh. out and it gets hung up on our on our wall. So right now, because of the decor, we don't have it up, but uh -huh. we've actually um, laminated a few of the oh. um, designs that people have done, and we're going to start hanging those in the rafters next. So and you've got uh, family <laughs> family pictures up north, yes. kinds of pictures, yeah. um, saws and things. Um, did you, so did that theme just come to you, like country charm, or, or how did you yes, visualize that? Yes, we wanted that? to make it as up north feel as mm. we could, as we uh -huh. felt going into Grandma's Cottage all the time. It just had that up north warm feeling. It uh -huh. felt very comfortable. We wanted our customers to feel that same way. The crayons and the paper just came about from us when we would go out to dinner. We would always bring stuff for our kids to do. Oh, so yeah. that's kind of where that came from. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and keep them entertained. And it's actually entertained more of the adults than it has the yes. kids. So. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you're open from 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. We haven't really talked a lot about the food yet, but what sort of... Um, customer patterns are you seeing? When, when does your clientele come? When are the busy periods, the busy days, or is that just uh, no it, rhyme or reason to it? There's no rhyme or reason whatsoever. Saturdays and Sundays are very busy, very steady. Uh -huh. During the week, you know, and, and, and as I tell Karen, I said, you know, Tuesday through Friday, we don't know we could be busy Tuesday, slow Wednesday, busy Thursday, you know, it, it, there's no rhyme or reason. But if you put it all together, it's very average. It averages out. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of when mm -hmm. people decide when they want to come out. What about within that 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. time frame on, on weekdays? When do you see peaks or, or valleys? Varies. <laughs> and that varies too. We have a lot of we have a lot of regular people. 
-hmm. we have we have the guys that come in at six o'clock in the morning and they're getting ready for their day and they got their day timers out and they're doing all that uh, we have a group that decides they're going to meet here and all of a sudden they show up at 6 15 in the morning mm -hmm. they could show up at 10 15 in the morning oh, yeah. it, it, it just there's uh -huh. no rhyme or reason to anything uh-huh yeah. nothing nothing yeah. whatsoever um now your your menu um i alluded to it before but it's uh for the most part it's fairly um I guess standard American breakfast and lunch foods, but you do have specials. So how do you keep your menu fresh? How do you keep it from being boring or too predictable? Her. her. Oh, you her. do? Okay. Her. Her. All right, I read right my question. No, no, her going, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? You know, and, and it's, but, but that's what's great about it is, is I'm, I'm looking at, I want to make sure that here's our menu and everything that's on that menu is going to be there and it's going to be good and mm -hmm. it's going to be consistent. And I've heard that from a lot of people. One of the, the greatest assets of our restaurant is, you know what, the pancakes are the same, the eggs are the same, the French toast are the same, you know, whatever we do, it's very consistent. Mm -hmm. But then we also have to have a little bit of a niche to draw somebody in, you know, which is care. So, know? like, what are your specials today or yesterday? Uh, today is cinnamon pecan caramel French toast. Um, we do a, a roast benedict. We do uh, uh, tomorrow's blueberry waffles. Hmm. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, we just try to change it up. Uh -huh. We've tried breakfast lasagna. We, we're going to be putting on the menu a, a breakfast pot pie. Oh yeah. Um, so we just get oh. we get a little yeah. creative in the kitchen yeah, and we she, start doing she, some she things. Back <laughs> breakfast pot pie doesn't sound like short order food. It sounds more. Laborious and time consuming to me. It, it, it actually it does. Is but that's why she food. does. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. why she'll do it. Yeah. So and just sort of have them ready, you mean? Or, or yep. what? Yeah. Oh. We'll, we'll cook them ahead of time, oh. you know, and then they'll be warmed, you know, as the customers come in. So it, it would take too long to do it as they order it. So it would be just one basic pot pie. But uh -huh. we just tried it one day. We were making our regular chicken pot pies for lunch, and I told the boys, I said, let's try something different today. So they're like, oh, here she goes again. She goes in the back, and <laughs> she gets to, you know, screw around and, yeah. and do everything back there, and then we come yeah. up with different things. And yeah. uh -huh. if they work, they work. Yeah. If they don't, oh, well. And so what are the most popular things on your menu? What What do you prepare most of in a given week? Pancakes. 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 We get the best pancakes ever. Our omelets are... A lot of people come in for the sausage biscuits and gravy. Mm. They, they request that because the um, gravy does have ground up sausage in it. So, oh. I mean, that's a huge thing. Oh. They, they always want to make sure it's not just gravy. They want to make sure that the sausage... I got that a lot this weekend. Oh. Oh, yeah. They want to make sure there was meat in the gravy. Uh -huh. no, it, yeah, I mean, we I mean get those so are the basics, yeah. you know, yeah. pancakes, and our, biscuits, and, our and biscuits, gravy. Yeah, our homemade biscuits, oh, people yeah. will come in for that because the butter's melted right into them when they're baking. So. No, your price is pretty modest, I think. I, <clears throat> I, I glanced at the menu, and the only the only one I remember, for whatever reason, it was I looked at a two-egg breakfast. It was three eighty-five, and that mm -hmm. came with, what, hash browns and, and things like that? Toast biscuit. and biscuit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are they fairly... Is it a is a meal that's going to hold you for the next four hours? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. we get we get more of actually we've gotten uh, people that said to us there's too much food. Oh yeah, okay, mm -hmm. and that's what I really want. You know, mm -hmm. I want people leaving. They're not leaving. walking out hungry. We have especially as you. I don't know if I should say this, but you know, as you you get into the older age groups or what have you, where they don't eat as much, uh -huh. they're going, don't give me as much. Oh yeah. I, they will have people that'll say, I just want a half order of hash browns. Oh, I yeah. only want this uh -huh. because there is so the much food. The plate is entirely full. I mean, oh, between yeah. the hash browns or an omelet or eggs, or it's completely full. Okay. So. And so, how would you describe your clientele? It varies from young families to senior citizens to teenagers. I mean, we're getting sometimes we get groups of younger kids in, you know, that will come in, like the teen group, like 20s. Uh -huh. 
Um, it Even does. It varies. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. varies from day to day. I mean, really, we get. We're, we love to see the young families come in because uh-huh. they feel it's a place they love to bring their kids. And this past weekend, we had a 16-year-old girl celebrate her birthday. She asked her parents to bring her here for uh-huh. her birthday breakfast. So oh, yeah, nice. We were really honored by that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is. And we and parents. when we find out they're singing, it, it, there is a birthday. We sing. Uh-huh. Yeah, we we come out and then, we you know we get the whole you know, <laughs> we ring the bell, we get the whole crowd yeah. going, and, uh-huh. and we make everybody sing. Yeah. And, we we you know. stack our donuts on yeah. a big stick. Um, one of our friends made us a platform for it. We put the stick inside and then run the donuts up and put a candle in, and we bring it to their table and sing. Uh-huh. And we get the whole restaurant singing with us. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's cool. That's a fun. Yeah. Hey, you gotta light the candle. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> have had a business plan when you set out to open this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Percentage-wise, where are you today, 16 months after opening, compared to your projection for you know a year or two, year and a half after opening? Probably four or five times what I ever thought. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, my original plan was to have Amanda out here. I'd be cooking, and then, depending on the busy days, we would bring in an extra person, uh-huh. okay, if Karen had a chance to come in. Karen actually quit another job so she could help out and, and do all this, and on a given Sunday, we could have eight, nine people, staff members, working. Yeah. Well, That's how busy we are. Wow. So, you know, right, right, no, but, but it, it, it's... At least four to five times more than I ever Boy, imagined. That's phenomenal. Ever. ever that is ever. absolutely yeah, phenomenal. Yeah, when people come in, they're, I said, we're, we're truly blessed because we never expected We are. Change. And, and the, the, the hardest part for us, I think, is, is teaching. And when I say that, is people walk in here and it's a small little place. And they're thinking, oh, okay, what's the big deal? Okay, where's the where's food? Well, there's only so much room, there's only so much, you know, and how fast you want to do it. It's not McDonald's. We want to, you know, mm-hmm. it's going to take a little bit. We're, we're going to do the food. We have a rule. The food doesn't come out. You know, if food comes back, it's not a good thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so what's a typical wait time for someone who's never gone in here and wants to plan for a breakfast? You must have a during standard. The week is so different. During it's a like week, it's five to ten minutes. Yeah, and I mean, you know, right now, somebody walked in. I mean, three minutes they can have their food. Okay, if that's what they want. On a weekend, it could be yeah. twenty minutes to forty-five minutes. You know, and of course your. Ability to accommodate changes drastically between winter and summer because you've got you seat about forty in here in the right. winter, and you've got the patio which doubles your space in the summer. Yep. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and what? Why do you think you've been so phenomenally successful compared to what you expected? Have you ever put your finger on the reason? I, I'm or reasons. I'm going to put it out there as the fact that you know, and I've told. Karen and I have been together for 30 years, and it's the same aspect that I have with this restaurant. It's like, I am who I am, okay? And for the most part, people get it, okay? There's some people that don't, okay? But we're out here. We're talking to people. Every time somebody walks in the door, somebody's saying, hi. Hi. That was the one thing that when we talked about this. You mean somebody on the staff? Yeah, somebody, somebody on the staff. I don't care who it is. It could, it could be Amanda. It could be Gianna. It could be. You know, it, it it doesn't matter who it is. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I can run upstairs for a second and I can tell how many people are coming in the door by, hi, how many do you have? Oh, yeah. Okay? Because everybody's greeted. Mm -hmm. Everybody's greeted. And we try really hard to say goodbye, have a nice day when people yeah, are leaving. Yeah, thank you. Too. You know, yeah. and and I just I just think being that old down home mm -hmm. thanks type type thing and 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 being honest with people. Okay. When I bring you out a meal or, or one of the girls brings you out a meal and it's not quite right and you got a problem with it and I'll come out and be honest with you and say, Hey, this is wrong, I'll fix it or where's my meal? I'm gonna be honest with you. We're busy. Mm -hmm. We burnt your pancakes. We're remaking them, mm -hmm. and just being honest yeah. with people. And so, for the most part, people. So clearly, the place has a personality, um, un unlike some, perhaps chain restaurants. And and I would think it's also almost a given that you guys must have filled a need or a desire for this, that kind of place, a breakfast, lunch place, so. yeah. A, a yeah, somewhat unpretentious, um, you know, in the downtown area, yeah, don't you think? Pretentious at all. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't have said somewhat. Like, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I take exactly. back. Exactly. I take it back to somewhat. Yeah, yeah. What's that word mean? No, no. We want people to come back and feel yeah. comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Like they were at our home. I mean, because we've we've done a lot of cooking for our kids, friends, and. You know, they always would come over and say, what are you guys cooking tonight? You know, so, we've, I mean, the given time, we'd have 20 people at our dining room table, you know, between all our wow. kids, friends coming over. And, and yeah. it wasn't uncommon. You yeah. know, it's not uncommon. So for us to do this is really not uncommon. Yeah. Well, um, listen, uh, we've been talking today on Money Talks with Karen and Paul Roberts, uh, Roberts Roost. I'm your host, Michael Burke. Thanks to our producer, Greg Shaver. Um, Roberts Roost 600. 6th Street in downtown Racine. If you haven't checked it out yet, please do. Bye now. Hi, I'm Matt Collins. I'd like to welcome you to Bob Weber Auto Mart on Douglas Avenue here in Racine. Across from Douglas Park, we specialize in one-year-old, low-mileage, almost new cars. And if you'd like to stop by and see them or see them on our website, bobweberautomart.com, we can save you between five and $10,000 on your next almost new car purchase.